Today, we have Artificial Intelligence AI. Madova. Hey, Madova. What's up? Hey, Apoorv. Madova is going to help us design an experiment <clears throat> to take the first baby step in order to quantitatively understand Newton's laws. Is the agenda clear? Clear. Apoorv Mathur ready? Ready. Students ready? Arch your back. Take a deep breath. Ready? Madova ready. 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 All right. Madova, lead us the way and I will convert it into an experimentation which students will follow. All right, sir. What do we need for the experiment? We need A, a force gun. What is a force gun? Imagine a machine. It blows a beam. It actually incidents a beam on the body and that body experiences a force. All right. Next, we need a block. Why do we need a block? Because we need someone that force gun to use on. All right. And we need a timer, which will measure the time taken for the event. Perfect. Template of the experiment is very simple. On a horizontal table, you have that block. Look at the force gun blowing a beam on the block. And what happens? The block moves. Is the template understood? Watch it again. The force gun throws a beam on the block. The block moves. One force gun, one force gun, imagine, gives one force. All right? When the motion begins, that is at t equal to zero, the velocity would be vi, initial velocity. When the block stops, the final instance, the time is capital T, and the velocity at that instant is v final or vf. Okay? Let capital F be the force applied. Let mass of the block be capital M. And the average acceleration of the body is equal to V final minus V initial. Of course, this is the formula for average acceleration. V final minus V initial upon time taken. Agreed? All right. Experiment number one. I vary the force. How do I vary the force? Imagine the force gun has maybe a dial or a gauge to increase or decrease the force. But I keep the mass of the block constant. Understand something. You are playing with mass and the forces. So what you're going to do is, you're going to keep some things constant and vary another thing. Why? Because by varying everything turn by turn, you want a relationship. Okay? In this first experiment, what do you do? You vary the force. F for F, 2F, 3F, 4F, so on and so forth. But you keep the mass constant. And you measure the average acceleration for the same time interval. In other words, block remains the same. Time is between 0 to t. You keep changing the force. When you do that and you plot the magnitude of the force graph with the average acceleration, Madova says the graph becomes linear. That means if I double the force, average acceleration gets doubled. If I triple the force, average acceleration gets tripled and so on. Check. All right. What is the conclusion? Conclusion is that the magnitude of the force is directly proportional to average acceleration. Absolutely. Experiment number two. This time, we add multiple force guns. I said one force gun gives one force. How about we have multiple forces? Okay. We again keep the mass of the block constant, guys. And make sure we apply all the forces from one direction only. Okay? Previously, there were forces which was, which was varying. But this time, one direction, multiple forces. Last time, F, 2F, 3F, the same force. This time, multiple forces. Alright, what do we do? Measure the average acceleration. And what do we actually achieve? We achieve that the magnitude of total force is still still proportional to the average acceleration. That means not only the one force, this time sigma f magnitude. Vector sum of all the forces is proportional to average acceleration. Do you see what we are doing? We are slowly building up on the result. From one force, we are now to multiple forces. Let's see what we do next. Experiment 3. Experiment 3 says keep the force constant. Change the block. Change the mass. That means force is F, mass is M, 2M, 3M, 4M, M by 2, M by 4, M by 8, and so on. And you again 
measure the average acceleration for the same time interval. And when you plot the graph of acceleration versus the mass, it is an inverse proportionality graph. Because M comes out to be proportional to 1 upon average acceleration. This graph is actually inverse proportionality graph. This graph comes out as Y proportional to 1 by X shape. Okay? And what's the result? The result is that the mass of the block is proportional to 1 upon average acceleration. Alright. One more experiment. This time, same force gun, same mass, but push it from different, different directions. Vary the direction. What happens now? This time, we don't measure the magnitude of acceleration. Since we vary the direction, we also check the direction. I repeat, since we vary the direction, we also check the direction only. And what do we have here, sir? What we have is that the direction of the net force and the direction of the acceleration turns out to be same. Four experiments. Let's talk about the summary. Madova, the summary, please. Here it is. Thank you. F magnitude is proportional to average acceleration. Check. That's the first result. Second, a small buildup on that. Can you see the how the F magnitude became sigma F? Multiple forces. Sigma F proportional to average acceleration. Perfect. Third one. The mass was inversely proportional to the acceleration. And the fourth one, the direction is same. What do I get? When I combine all the four results of all the four experiments. Medova, do the honors. What we get is sigma f proportional to ma. Sigma f, the net unbalanced external force acting on a body, is proportional to its mass multiplied by constant, uh, multiplied by acceleration vector. If force is constant, acceleration is constant. Because mass I am treating as a constant here. In the modern world, proportionality constant K is chosen as 1 and the equation becomes sigma F is equal to MA. Did you get that? For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.